I'd like to call on our mayor to swear in our most recent counselor for Ward 4. Trinita, raise your right hand, put your left hand on the Bible, and please repeat after me. <laughs> I, Trinita D. Lindsay, I, Trinita D. Lindsay, do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear that I will support, that I, that I will support, obey and defend, obey and defend the Constitution of the United States, the Constitution of the United States, and the Constitution of this Commonwealth, and the Constitution of this Commonwealth. And that I will discharge the duties of my office. And I will discharge the duties of my office. With fidelity. With fidelity. Congratulations. Thank you. Welcome aboard. Welcome, Councillor Lindsay. Thank you. you will never forget this night. <laughs> okay, at this time I would ask that uh, you rise for a moment of silence followed by the pledge to the flag. time we're about to watch a presentation to our Pottstown Police Department. He's emceeing that. Mayor? I don't have any special effects or videos. So. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to Photoshop in here too. <laughs> Sorry, good. I was just texting that. Chief, it is my distinct honor and privilege on behalf of the borough and the Potsdam Police Department to present you with this commendation for honorable discharge, which is awarded to Chief F. Richard Drumheller. As many of you know, Chief has been with our police department since 1988. I was seven. Um, <laughs> he, was, he was promoted to Detective Sergeant in 2003 before he was promoted to Captain in 2007. And then in May 2013, he was promoted to our Chief of Police. Uh, what you may not know is, in addition to Chief and um, all the other roles that he has served in our police department, he's also served on the traffic unit, uh, the detective unit, he was a DARE officer, a member, a member of the Mo Montgomery County Drug Task Force, Montgomery County Reconstruction Team, a DUI coordinator, honor guard, negotiator, commander of negotiators, and many more. 
And Chief, this is well deserved. I'm going to miss you terribly. Thank you so much for all of your service and for making Pottstown a safer place. Till the sixth. <coughs> Tomorrow. Four o'clock. Not that I'm counting. We have some dignitaries here in the in our audience. Uh, hopefully they will participate. Uh, Representative David M. Maloney Sr., Representative Tim Hennessy, Representative Tom Quigley. Would any of you like to offer any rewards? Dave, don't tell me you were seven. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> she made us all look old. Right. <laughs> uh, it's my pleasure to be here uh, tonight with my colleagues, Representative Tim Hennessy, Representative Dave Maloney, to uh, congratulate and honor uh, Chief Drumheller on his retirement from the Potsdam Police Department. Uh, the first time that I met the chief was back when he was a sergeant, back in 2002. Uh, I was then the mayor of Royersford, and Royersford had just joined the regional DUI enforcement team, and we were going to have the first checkpoint in Royersford. Uh, and some of the members of our council were a little concerned about uh, that, how it might go down, what would happen there. So I went out to observe the uh, checkpoint for the entire time. I think it was like from 11 till 2 in the morning. And the thing that struck me about the chief then, he was coordinating and running the whole thing, was his calm demeanor, uh, his sense of, of purpose. Uh, his, uh, you know, th there was a lot of activity going on that night. I think there was about five arrests total. And the whole time he just had that real calm demeanor, you know, giving uh, instructions to the men who were there, uh, take, talking a couple situations through uh, before they decided what to do. So, you know, that really impressed me and it uh, created a great sense of, uh, of calm, I think, too, for the borough of Royersford, who for the first time was participating in such an activity. Uh, in subsequent years, when he became the captain and then his chief, my office will be in contact with him uh, now and again to go over different issues uh, that we were presented with, with citizens coming to us with issues. Uh, we would check with the chief uh, or the captain at that time. And again, the same thing, very professional, very even keeled, very calm, and everything always worked out well. And I think that in a job such as law enforcement uh, faces today, the difficulties that they face today, I think we need uh, men like Chief Drumheller who bring that sense of calm, that sense of purpose, sense of fairness uh, to, to their work. And certainly the best thing I think about the chief is that he's created a great example for those other officers who are coming up the ranks here in Pottstown and in the greater Montgomery County area. So it's been my pleasure to know him over these years. Uh, again, that, that first impression back in 2002 has stuck with me the whole time. And I just congratulate him on a, a well-deserved retirement and a well-deserved career. To me. Uh, it's a pleasure for me to join with Tom and Dave uh, to recognize your retirement, but really to congratulate you on the culmination of a very fine career in police work. Uh, in today's world, it's especially important for people to have a feeling that their the policing duties are being handled properly and administered properly. And I think you've delivered that in spades for the borough of Potsdam over the last five years uh, and your career before that, but especially as, as the chief administrator of the police department. Um, so I congratulate you for that. Um, I also want to just recognize the fact that not many of us get to go out as chief of the, uh, the 4th of July parade in the borough, <laughs> as you are doing. Your timing on that is magnificent. Uh, so congratulations and best wishes in your retirement. Well, much has been said here tonight. I am Dave Maloney from the Berks County side. 
of the communities that I often talk about that we're all so connected with. And uh, it's been a great pleasure of mine to see individuals like Rick who actually went to school with me <laughs> and graduated from the same high school. And uh, of course, that was on the Berks County side. Did I say Berks County already? Twice. Yeah, OK, twice. So, <laughs> so just a little rub there. But you know, this is what I've often talked about with respect to how our communities need one another and how they overlap and how important that is. My colleagues helped me author a piece of legislation that would make all our first responders in Pennsylvania recognized on one special day in September, and that would be 27th. And fellows like Rick and, and his colleagues and those that we know, and we talked a little bit earlier tonight about, and we reminisced a little bit about some of the folks that we have known down through the ages and those who have stepped forward. It's like tonight, I mean, we had a council member sworn in tonight for public service and we have another public servant after decades of service leaving. So, so I think it speaks volumes for what public service is and what it means to our communities. So Rick is a fellow to me that is exemplary in that um, we get to, from the House of Representatives, recognize people like him with a citation. And so the citation we have here tonight, I won't read, but uh, I'm sure he would let you uh, peruse it and, and uh, hold it. But uh, it's, it's quite an accomplishment. And, and these are not taken lightly, and especially under this kind of, kind of service. And Rick, um, congratulations to you. And um, you know, just a true, true public servant who has always put you know, your life not only out in the front, but the rest of the time that you may have planned is always put on the back burner. And those are the types of things that we appreciate and we should say thank you to. It's a rare opportunity for, to uh, present the police with a citation, so we want to take a, <laughs> another picture here. Wedding, Evan. Yes. <laughs> Stand here, guys, if you would. My wife will give me the devil if I come home and she doesn't have something to post on Facebook. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not saying something, I'm really very fast. <laughs> Wait, wait a minute, Rick. But wait, there's more. And now, Chief, from our interim borough manager, uh, we the borough would like to recognize you. Well, Rick, it's obvious that you've positively impacted many lives throughout your career, beginning as a police officer through to the chief. And um, you know, personally, I've appreciated your lighthearted approach, which fosters a sense of camarader camaraderie among the staff, um, your ability to strike balance on op opposing viewpoints, um, your good nature commitment to the improvement of the borough to the benefit of its residents. But perhaps the attribute that I appreciate the most uh, is your expert guidance and your ability to help those around you. So for that, I thank you. And on behalf of Borough Council, I'd like to present you with this brick to be placed in the pavement at Riverfront Park Pavilion during a brief ceremony that will take place in the upcoming months. We don't have the actual brick, but this is a picture of it. <laughs> Under subcommittee reports, uh, infrastructure, our Vice President Culp is not here. 
Economic development. Uh, let's hear from Peggy Lee Clerk. How are we doing? Good evening, councilors, Madam Mayor. Um, I'm here just to talk a few moments more about QOZs. So they are the Qualified Opportunity Zones, which the governor nominated three of Pottstown Zone's census tracts for. Uh, we made it through that process. We did go um, to the Treasury. We were submitted to the Treasury Department. And as of June 14th, the Governor's Office announced the approval has been received from the U.S. Department of Treasury for those QOZs. Great. So now we wait for the instruction on policies, again, to remind you the benefit of this to private investors is that they will get um, access to relief in capital gains in some form, uh, but the benefit to the borough is that we are going to have an incentive for people to make a long-term investment in real estate and businesses within the borough that are located within these qualified opportunity zones. So it's a really important thing for us. Um, so that is my report today. Um, again, I would just like to add everything paid certainly is grateful to the chief for all of his work because economic development does not happen in a vacuum. Everything in a community affects it. So we want to thank you. Thanks for everything. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, again, uh, Councilor Culp is not here for infrastructure or for transportation, the ad hoc zoning, uh, Councilor Brock. We have our, our changes to minor land development for Council's consideration. Uh, and then uh, we're still you know, figuring out what we're going to do for open uh, alcohol containers right. on, on the downtown. Okay. Animal Committee. Uh, uh, I have no report at this time. Um, no report at this time. Uh, okay. Can we have an estimate of the next meeting? Uh, staff is getting a number of calls, and we don't know when I and where. I thought you said some information. You, did, you did. Okay. Um, we were, we're, in the, we're in the transition of a chief, so you have one retiring chief. We don't have an interim chief or an appointed chief, so we were waiting for that in order to schedule the next meeting. Um, I'm aware of the calls that you're getting. They're being fielded to me, so I have been taking care of them. So the problems are getting addressed, and as soon as you appoint a chief or an interim, we'll schedule the next meeting. Will do. Thank you. And Councilor Kirkland, the Ad Hoc Financial Sustainability Oversight Committee. Yes. Uh, no real new information at this time. We just continued going over the EIP requirements on uh, the last meeting. And would you add... Uh, that we had our discussions about the EIP. We, we did, and I'll expand on the EIP uh, on a later agenda item uh, where we're going to be uh, asking for approval of an RFP for that. Okay. Boards and committees. Emergency services reports. Mr. Feather or Mr. Yerger? Thank you, everybody. I'd just like to echo the remarks from earlier, congratulating Chief Drumheller on his re retirement, and thank you for your years of service from the Bull Fire Company. Um, I was not able to be here for the most previous meeting, um, so I'll give you two months' worth of reports. Uh, for the month of May, we did 71 calls, and the month of June, we did 61 calls out of the Goodwill Station. Um, for training, May 6th, we did some driver training on one of our trucks. May 8th, we participated in an extrication training in the back parking lot of our station. On the 17th, we did a tour of the Pottstown sewer treatment plant for our career staff. On the 22nd, the 23rd, and the 24th, we also participated in tours of RSI leasing, which is the Norfolk Southern Transfer Station down on South Kime Street, so the guys could get familiar with um, their policies and procedures and what comes through the transfer station. June 5th, we did a three-hour water rescue awareness class where 15 members uh, attended that. June 12th, we were out on the river. Uh, it was right after one of the rainstorms with the boats. The water was up pretty good. We were able to do uh, about four hours worth of very good boat operations training in both daylight and some low-light 
evolutions. June 26, we did uh, water rescue training again at uh, this time at North End Swim Club. And uh, prevention and community service, May 25th, we assisted Brookside Country Club with the service of their flagpole. June 1st, we took a child to school. It was a raffle that was uh, done by the Pottstown Cluster and somebody purchased a, uh, a ride to school for their child. June 22nd, we did a vehicle extrication display for Camp Cadet in Lower Pottsgrove uh, in conjunction with their police department. And we also did the Memorial Day Parade um, on May 28th. Fundraising, we had two Fire Academy lunches, May 5th and 6th, um, down in Montgomery County Fire Academy. May 11th, we did our annual Mother's Day flower sale. May 28th, we did our breakfast at the station. And June 16th, we did another Fire Academy um, lunch service. Uh, upcoming events, we have our golf tournament, which is this Saturday out at Gilbertsville Golf Course in New Hanover Township. Thank, Thank you. you. Good evening, Council. Um, I don't have a uh, printed out report because, mostly because uh, we've been going through a transition. I do have one major announcement is that um, those of you that know Charlie Pierce had to, uh, he stepped down as president uh, because, for personal reasons, and uh, I have now assumed the role of president and will be continuing on with, with the policies and everything else that we've been working on and following through with. To follow up as far as training is concerned, a lot of the, the uh, training that uh, Kevin just mentioned, our, some of our people were there uh, with the participation. The, uh, the other thing is that we were down with, the, with a couple of the events at the park with the 4th of July and uh, with the um, sports fest that they just had down there. And we have uh, some other things that we're in the process of changing and in, in transition, so I should have a more detailed and better report for next month. Very good. Thank you. Congratulations. Okay, human relations. Ms. Levingood. Short, so we'll try. Good evening, counselors. Um, the Human Relations Commission um, was created by council um, under a Burr ordinance because of the need in the community. Um, the Commission's July meeting is scheduled for Tuesday, July the 10th, 2018, and that will be held in Council Chambers at 6 p.m. And the Commission is working on recruiting candidates for future commissioners. Um, and to be in compliance with the jurisdiction and the duties outlined in the Borough Ordinance um, governing the Commission, our Community Day Fair, Let's Grow Together, is scheduled for Sunday, July the 15th, 2018, um, from 12 noon to 5 on the 100 block of High Street. We got that rescheduled due to the torrential rain that Mother Nature just didn't want to cooperate with us. Um, and we still do have approximately 70 vendors. Almost all the vendors um, basically said that they will be able to come that day. We actually have some additional vendors that are coming and a couple that are backing out. But the vendors include retail food, um, children's activities, uh, medical police fire, um, the opening ceremony is going to be at 12 noon, just like it was scheduled before. And we're going to have interactive demonstrations with many different cultural, ethnic, and nationality groups. Um, the Fair Zone will promote respect, diversity, and collaboration between all agencies. So we would like everybody to come out and join us on Sunday, July the 15th, starting at 12 noon, and to have some fun. And on behalf of the Commission, we would also like to um, thank Chief Trumheller for his service uh, to the community, and we wish you well in your future. Thank you. Thank you. Land Bank Report, Ms. Penrod. Very proud to report on uh, the Land Bank's first meeting on Monday 25th. Number one, we elected officers, of which the chair is yours truly. Vice Chair is Cheryl Chiarella, Secretary is Andrew Manastra, and Treasurer is Twyla Fisher. Uh, number two, uh, 
we approved the basic operating bylaws with the understanding amongst ourselves that the bylaws will probably need revisions as we gain experience with the process and the unique situation of our area. Number three, our meetings are published to be held on the fourth Monday of each month at four o'clock, except Christmas Eve. And uh, they are public meetings. I think they're gonna be held next door and we're hoping to see people come out to learn how the whole thing works and the meetings will be held in this room. Oh, in this room, okay, sorry, in this room. Um, and, and we hope that people will come out since there'll be lots of room. Uh, number four, a set of policies and a set of draft policies and procedures are undergoing review and eventual approval by members of the land bank. Uh, the policies and procedures will also be subject to public comment, publication and comment, and final approval by borough council before they actually take effect. So it's gonna be a little while before that happens. Uh, members of the land bank are planning to attend land bank meetings at other municipalities and to look up and talk to land bank members of other municipalities to try and speed up our individual and collective learning curves regarding financing, public, private partnerships, development, urban planning, the legalities, the scope of land banks and everything else uh, to make sure that we return property to useful purpose. Number five, the land bank approved negotiations to uh, begin uh, a memoir memorandum of understanding for appointment of an executive director for the purpose of providing guidance and executing instructions from the land bank, specifically uh, Peggy Lee Clark from PAID, uh, selected due to the shared critical expertise which will be required to operate successfully. And again, I emphasize at least as starters until we get going. That's it, thank you, uh, thank you for, for your support. While you're standing, <laughs> My next uh, library. Tell us about the library. Library. Five more points to, to talk to you about. Uh, the library continues to help keep kids learning, even uh, during the summer break, and to avoid loss of their reading skills. In a STEM number one in a STEM related program today, twenty middle schoolers made scented bomb baths, which will not only help get them squeaky clean and smelling good tonight on this horrible hot stinky day, but also taught them the science behind accurate measuring, uh, formulation chemistry, fizzy reactions of baking soda and Epsom salts, and the use of essential oils such as lemon in many other products. And I dare the majority of people here to define any one of those points. Uh, in another STEM-related program on July 17th, mark your calendars over at Riverfront Park at six o'clock. Everybody, kids, teens, parents, grandparents, is the Riverfront Reptile Program held in coordination with Mike at Parks and Rec. Um, uh, based on past popularity, we're expecting about 75 attendees to see Jesse Rothacker from Forgotten Friends Reptile Sanctuary in Lancaster show off his critters. So I'll be there. Uh, third, another STEM program to engage middle school girls in science topics is being held on five different days in July. As of this morning, there was still room, some space available for registration. Number four, thanks to support from the YW3CA, which is the YW Tri-County Christian Association, a cooking class for young kids and their parents is being held weekly at the library to teach healthy cooking and eating habits to help raise a new generation of kids who eat carrots and hummus. Mm, instead of potato chips. <laughs> and number five, approximately 500 kids are participating in the various summer programs at the library, most of whom are obviously borough residents, but we're working on identifying the specific metrics for participants from each of the other three supporting municipalities, just because inquiring minds want to know. And thank you again to the borough residents, businesses, and, 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 and the council for supporting this critical piece of our fine town. That's all. Thank you. Councillor Kirkland, all of it. Um, no real new information. Some of our programs are ongoing. Okay. Pottstown School District. Anyone? Okay, nope. About the mayor's report. What have you been up to? <laughs> Um, I want to thank uh, our Rotary Club 
Amy Wolf, Amy Francis, and all the volunteers of the Go Forth Festival. That was hands down the best 4th of July party and fireworks display I have ever seen or been to. Mm -hmm. And they pulled it off despite uh, very extreme heat <laughs> during the day and um, unexpected downpour right before the fireworks. Um, so I was pretty impressed and grateful to all of those contributors to be able to bring back, who were able to bring back fireworks to Pottstown and throw a pretty amazing party. So I'm look forward, looking forward to what they will be doing next year. I also want to thank our police department for keeping us safe yesterday. Um, I was blown away by the extreme rapid response of our officers. We had some minor issues yesterday, um, and their response time was remarkable. And additionally, I was unaware of our um, officers' fence hurling abilities. Uh, unfortunately, Cordis, we need to work on your landing, but I appreciate um, everything that the police did yesterday. I also want to thank Chief for not just sitting around for the last six months knowing he was going to retire. Uh, Chief has, is really retiring and going out with a, with a bang, no pun intended. Um, I attended the Montgomery County District Attorney's press conference, I believe last week, um, where our Potsdam Police Department and other police departments in the community and surrounding areas were able to take down a large drug trafficking ring um, that had 6,600 6, doses of fentanyl, which were confiscated. And Chief served an integral role in leading our police department, who aided Montgomery County and the surrounding counties in um, incarcerating, I'm sorry, not incarcerating, that's the wrong term, in um, well, is that correct? Are they incarcerated now? Okay. Uh, 25 members of this drug trafficking ring. So I just want to say thank you very much for continuing to keep Pottstown safe even on your way out. I also at attended a Habitat um, and Pottstown Community Action Meeting with Habitat Partners on a neighborhood revitalization grant. So cross your fingers that we are awarded the grant. We also had our rotary changeover so I would like to thank our past president, Mike Bright, for his service, and our incoming president, Mike Sloan. I wish him best of luck and um, not too much anxiety this year. I'd also like to thank Reverend Elliot Liverman and Netzer for their blessings at the national, uh, I'm sorry, the regional night of prayer at the Hill School. We also had a focus group um, led by Hannah Davis and David Charles and met with members in the community on the needs for a community center. So more to come on that. I attended the Pottstown Bar Association um, meeting. I was also honored at the Crystal Tea Room by the legal intelligencer. I was one of 30 attorneys who won the lawyers on the fast track. I also um, was one of the top 10 of the KYW Women Achievement Awards, and I missed that ceremony so that I could support Pedita and our 5K run to farm. So that was June. Um, okay. And I'd like to respond to some comments that have been made in the community um, that we never respond to anyone who contacts us. Well, I can't speak for everyone up here. We are all volunteers, with the exception of Chuck, Justin, and Ginny. This is a volunteer position. They tell you it's part-time, but as much as uh, has, that's been going on in the community in six months, it really can be a full-time position. So I just want everyone to know that we are doing our best we definitely are not in this for the money. Um, we get $2,000 a year stipend. 
And we're definitely not in it for the status. We are here to serve our community. And that being said, I work full time. I also do this full time. So I always respond. If you contact me, it just may take a while. If you have an urgent need to speak with me, please leave a voicemail and I will get back to you that day. I always return my voicemails that day. So um, that being said, I know there's a problem with the communication in the borough. Um, and it's my understanding that there used to be town halls in each ward. And I believe they stopped due to lack of community interest. So what I would like to do is poll the community, I believe I can do that on Facebook, um, ward by ward to see what the interest is for a town hall um, in each ward that would be led by that council person at their convenience. We would try to keep it under an hour just so that your wards can communicate to you their concerns and you can reach out to them about what we may be voting on um, at our borough council meetings. So I'd like to pull the community to see if that's something that any of the wards would be interested in and determine if we should try this again. So look for that on my Facebook page. That's it. That's it. Very good. I, I'll be interested in the results of your poll. Okay. Uh, now our interim borough manager. Uh, yeah, so I just wanted to um, kind of update everyone regarding the recent news of the closing of the uh, Mercury building. You know, this <coughs> building has been a mainstay, and the Mercury has been a mainstay in the community since 1931. And on June 20th, I, I sent a letter to Digital First Media on behalf of Borough Council requesting that they reconsider closure of the building. And I just want to assure everyone that in the event we are not able to persuade them to keep the Mercury staff in the building, we will be undertaking an aggressive campaign through paid to attract high quality redevelopment that will put this architecturally significant building back into productive use. Uh, update on the spray park. It reopened today. Uh, unfortunately, it was closed uh, on the 4th due to an electric fa failure in the circuitry. Uh, we do apologize for any inconvenience this may have caused for your holiday plans. We're operational on the 4th. On the 4th, okay. We opened up the morning of the 4th. Okay. So we're open, open for business now. Uh, if you recall, neighbors of 441 Johnson Street have attended numerous council meetings to express their concerns about the condition of their property and the need uh, for the conditions there to be addressed sooner rather than later. I'm happy to report that the borough was able to petition the judge uh, in the case to have the court date moved up to Thursday, July 12th at 1245 p.m. Um, all the effective parties have been notified. and. Um, LNI staff is also working with the neighbors to get the Department of Health involved um, with that situation as well. Great. Update on the, um, the stormwater arches. Uh, we remain focused on finding grant money to repair the arches, which has been quite a difficult task um, because the, the arch repair projects, what we're finding <coughs> is they're just not a good fit for most grant, <coughs> excuse me, for most grant sources. Um, so we're currently working with the state legislators to <clears throat> find a way to modify an existing grant program so that the scope of the arch um, can be considered um, as a high priority and or to identify some type of emergency funding in, in the state budget that might be available um, to help in situations like this. And that's all. Very good. So we got the judge to move the date. We did. Thank you. Uh, now we'll have a presentation about the Edgewood Cemetery. Mr. Manostra. <laughs> no, I'm okay. You'll be able to hear me. Believe me. Uh, hi, I'm Andrew Manostra. This is my wife, Sue. We're residents of Pottstown, like many of you. We live at 740 East High Street. We're here to talk to you about Edgewood Cemetery, which many of you may know as in a not so positive way because at times it has not been very well maintained. 
So about two years ago, a friend of mine, Randy Doty, came to me and said he was interested in forming a, a, an organization that would take care of this cemetery, which is, the best way I can describe it, abandoned. There's no owners. The owners is a corporation that hasn't been in existence since the 1930s. The Perpetual Care Fund has been depleted, and the last people who ran it, they ran out of money, and then they said goodbye. Uh, so it, Randy came to, to, to me and said, let's start an organization. So we started an organization called the Edgewood Historic Cemetery, uh, which eventually became, it's a nonprofit company, corporation, which received its 501c3 status so that we could obtain tax deduct deductible donations. Okay, a committee was formed, uh, and we plotted along for a couple of years. Uh, one of the members of the audience is a committee member here, Marshall Levengood. Yes, she's on. And, um, and I wanted to recognize her. And also, so the committee was formed, and we plotted along. Until my birthday this year, on April 28th, we were driving down to go someplace for my birthday. I deserve it. <laughs> and um, got a call from Randy. Randy said, hey, I got to step back. Can you kind of take the lead? Looked at her. We said, okay, we did it. All right, so we're, so, and it was, I think, at the first, the very beginning of the grass growing season that, that with zero money. So what has happened over the past couple of months is that a group of us has tried to maintain the cemetery on our own, okay? And so we have people like Todd's Tree Service. They come on Saturday. He's going to cut that whole back 40, I call it, by between Edgewood and Climb Street, okay? That big giant field. Um, there's a gentleman by the name of Mark Custer. His family donate his time. Okay, to come out and just mow the thing, mow the, mow the grass, they weed whack. We do the best we can. People like David and Connie Miller, they come and they do it. I'm out there on my tractor. By the way, uh, I hope the police will leave me alone when I'm driving from 740 East High Street on my tractor on the street. Okay, please do not arrest me. Okay, I am going to the cemetery. I won't be there. Okay. <laughs> but you may be, since you have free time, uh, be, I got a lawnmower with your name on it. Okay. So, anyway, anyway, so what we're trying to do is we're not interested in burying people. We are not a cemetery, okay? Uh, we're not selling plots, okay? What we're trying to do is take a, a problem, which is, in my opinion, pretty severe, which is these were our ancestors. These are the people that built pots down. These are the people that you read about, okay? And their graves are falling in. Literally. Literally. You can see graves. I could go there and see graves, okay? But there's, there's incredible history there. Mr. Hilton back there, we walked this, this cemetery at one point, and he showed me some people that he, not that you knew, but that you knew of, okay? <laughs> Maybe you knew them, I don't know, um, that you knew of. And, uh, but the, the history there is incredible, and it's just a tragedy. It's a tragedy that this is how we treat those that went before us. And I believe how we treat our deceased shows a lot about our society. So what we're trying to do is we're, I'm beg borrowing, we all are beg borrowing, please give us money. Now, this is not a borrowed problem. It's a borrowed problem, not, it's not specifically a borough problem. It's not a Hill School problem. It's an everybody problem. Because as part of this community, as part of this community, Edgewood Cemetery is part of this community. And this is a problem. So it's up to us to solve it in whatever way we can. Whatever way we can. Some of us mow, some of us do this. Go to the Hill School, maybe the Hill School will give us some money, maybe not. <coughs> I'll call my friends, I'll s squeeze all the people that, gave, that I did favors for in my life. Yo, you gotta help, okay? And beg borrowing steals so that we can get through this year, which I need probably about ten to fifteen thousand dollars <coughs> to get through this year, this mowing season, and then snow removal. <laughs> now snow removal is taken care of. I got somebody who's just going to go plow one path as soon as he goes on his way home. But so that we can come up with a plan for the cemetery, plans that ex consist of just spitballing things, 
that big giant field, that big giant field. Maybe that can be a farm. Okay, maybe that can be a part of the Mosaic Land Trust. Maybe they can use that. Maybe we can make it a solar farm and somebody takes over and does stuff with the power. I don't know. I don't know. What we can do is, we don't know. There are so many things to do. We can create gardens. There are, there's history there that we can walk through there. And we can incorporate that into the bike trails. By the way, thank you. Excellent idea. Really good. Okay. Um, but <laughs> incorporate the bike trails. Okay, because just to have people stop there, learn a little bit about the history of Pottstown, about everyone's forefathers, the people who started this town, okay, and made this town great, they can read about them, they can learn about them. I don't know, okay? But what we need is right now, what I have to do is, is basically we have to plug the holes in the dike, okay? And once we plug the holes in the dike and get that taken care of, then we can strategize. Then we can talk about maybe getting you on the National Historic Register. And maybe we can talk about uh, uh, creating some sort of committees or something like that to go after grant money, okay? We can do that, okay? But right <coughs> now, if, the reason why I'm here talking to people is that maybe some of your constituents will come to you and say, yo, that is a disaster up there. What are you, 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 you doing about it? Well, you're not doing anything about it because you don't have to. Okay, it's not your problem. It's our problem. So send those people over to me or Sue, okay, and I'll deal with them. I'll talk to them and tell them what we're doing. But if you can tell them, yes, there's a committee that exists, they're trying to work on it, they need money, feel free to give, feel free to give, feel free to give. Push feel, a lawnmower. Push a lawnmower, mm -hmm. Chief, push a lawnmower. Weed whack. Got it. Yeah, thanks, buddy. <laughs> uh, I know I can count on you. I'll be there. All right. Just wait for me. I'll be there. Oh, I'll be there. <laughs> so, in any event, that's what the plan is. That's what we're trying to do. We're just trying to survive. We're trying to create respectfulness. Okay, I drive that lawnmower through that place. It's so sad. It's so sad. It's so sad. Okay, these people were buried here, and then somebody, if somebody will come to me and say, "Hey, you know, why don't we go to the people who, the families that were there?" And we were buried there, and they asked them for more money. They already paid. They already paid to have money. That's wrong to go after, you know, you. Let's say your, your, your grandparents were there. I said, hey, Joe, let's give me some more money. You paid already. That's wrong. Okay? So we've got to figure out how to make this somewhat, somewhat self-sustaining and also bring the cost of the maintenance down by 50% and perhaps make it somewhat self-sustaining so that the gap, the fundraising gap each year is not this, it's this. Since, it's since we have our cameraman here, would you address our home audience and let them know how to contact you? Uh, please feel free to give your tax deductible donations to the Edgewood Historic Cemetery and please send your donations to 740 East High Street, Pottstown, Pennsylvania, 19464. There was a website, the Edgewood Historic Cemetery, on Facebook. Please feel free to like it. We will post, we post volunteer schedules, we post volunteer opportunities. If you can't give, if you can't give money, you can give time. If you can't give money, your time, and you got some lawn mowing equipment that you could, that you could, that you don't need anymore, give it to me, please, okay? And that would be great, and we will correct this problem and Edgewood Cemetery could be a place that we are proud of, as opposed to, as the show is something that we, we took a problem and we made something good out of it. Great. Questions by anybody? Miss Mayor, Madam Mayor. Andrew, do you know, I know that there was some issue with records, and unfortunately, well, I was contacted by a woman who has four plots at Edgewood and would like to be buried there. Yeah. So I know there's an issue with locating where the actual plots are. Do you know who has the records or do you have the records? Okay, there are two places, that, there are several places that might have it. Number one, I think Pottstown Burial Vault might have that information, okay? And who else? Uh, or the, that's where the local undertakers are sending the folks. You're gonna, that's going to say the historical society, And the, the historical society has a decent set of plots and maps and indexes, uh, and we can meet you. We can meet anyone there to try and help figure out 
uh, possible locations, although determining open vacancies, that's not something we can do. Yeah. Uh, Stephanie, I talked to a family, excuse me, I talked to a family this weekend who um, their mom was buried there not even six months ago, and without you know, us getting involved at that point, and you know, we, we didn't know about this, and how do you get someone buried? They actually went out with the undertaker and actually used a, a pole to, to see where the open spots were in the area um, where their family plot was. So, uh, okay. it, so it's doable. It's doable. It's doable. Right. It, with no money being given to Edgewood, it's all through the um, the funeral home. Deb, would I be able to send this woman your way? Yeah, yeah. For, for starters, I, I can I can reach out. I mean, we, we what we have are a couple of people um, who are pretty good local experts on the cemetery, and I can contact them on behalf of. And my second, Andrew, is if you can solve the pro the issue of like a fence or containment, I can work on them to get an ordinance passed so we can have goats or sheep <laughs> or. Well, goats or sheep. Goats I already, or sheep would be good. I already have someone who will lend us or rent us for a discounted rate sheep and goats to keep the, the uh, cemetery plowed. We just have a containment issue. What we need is someone to take care of the groundhogs. <laughs> there, there's several of that. But, yeah, no, I, we would we can get some fencing. Of course, that's obviously not going to be an inexpensive issue. Unless we got all those little electric things and put them on each the, sh the, sh the invisible fences, that so would each be time a sheep went by, went, <laughs> no, I don't think that would work. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you not think so, Ron? Not a good idea. <laughs> thank you. Uh, um, okay. Thank but yeah, you. Thank, thank you for you your very time. Much. And anytime, you know, you. if you could encourage your constituents to come out, if they want to have a block party of, of lawn mowing fun, please send them my way. Okay. Thanks, guys. Thank you. <coughs> okay, and now uh, tell us about the keep. Uh, we have a memorandum of understanding, Ms. Clerk. So the Keystone Employment Economic Plan, um, the Planning Commission has been here twice before this year to do presentations about this plan. It is a concept at this point. Uh, the, the DCED money, the grant period, came to an end that PAID was able to obtain uh, on June 30th, 2018. There is still work to be done. In your packets this evening, there is an MOU. The MOU spells out uh, going forward what we need to happen between West Pottsgrove Township and the borough to keep this plan moving forward. Uh, there will be an RFI request for interest sent out to have developers answer, and there will be an oversight committee made up of elected officials and whoever the elected officials would like to have on this committee to see um, when they come through, the development plans come through, to decide whether or not they are meeting the needs of what the concept plan was laid out for. So um, I hope you will take into consideration the MOU. It is, um, it was passed in June by West Cot Pottsgrove. They did agree to it, so we are looking for Borough Council to also agree. I do want to point out that there is a time um, end, if you will, to this particular um, MOU. It's going to be reviewed on an annual basis to see what is working and what isn't at this point with this MOU, so it is not one that goes on ad infinitum. The last thing I want to talk about, even though not mentioned in the MOU, is that the plan by Section 302, uh, in accordance with Section 302 of any adoption of a municipal plan, a multi-municipal plan, or a county plan, it does have to be shared with a variety of entities, and that will happen throughout the summer. The Pottstown School District, Montgomery County Planning Commission, the Regional Planning Commission, which will not meet again until September, 
and then also Douglas Township, which I've been informed there is a Douglas Township, also in Berks Township, I'm not quite, Berks County, I'm not quite sure why they get the plan, but they do, uh, the Planning Commission explained to me. So okay. um, I ask that you take it up on Monday night and um, understand that this is an important piece to the project <coughs> continuing and then eventually getting to completion. I just wanna remind you that this has an approximation of five million dollars in tax revenue uh, that is combination for borough municipal taxes as well as school district taxes to Pottstown. So it's an important project for everyone. Last thing I want to talk about is the Keystone Boulevard extension. This is a piece of the commitment that you are making. You're not saying you will build the road, but it is an important component of this plan. And developers, without the insurance that the road is going to be built some way, somehow, uh, you're going to have a difficult time. So I just good. wanted to give you that update. Thank you. Okay, we'll list this for approval Monday evening. 12. Uh, the title is EIP request for proposal earlier uh, under the topic of the oversight committee. It was that committee that reviewed all the language uh, of the proposal and you're ready to go forward? Yeah, we're ready to move forward. Um, basically, it's a um, fairly uh, <coughs> boilerplate uh, RFP that is provided to us by DCED. Um, we did modify a few things to basically acknowledge that we did go through an EIP in 2009 and, and they should build off, off that as their, as their baseline. Um, they'll also do a financial trend analysis um, to review the long-term uh, financial assessment trends. Uh, they'll also prepare an emergency plan for the current fiscal year if necessary. Um, Step four is to do a management audit of all major departments. Um, it will include summaries of departments um, comprised of budget and personnel information and other data. Uh, there will also be interviews as a part of that process by uh, the staff members. Um, and one of the things that the committee did identify through this is that, you know, specifically through this audit process, we want to look at um, all of our agreements with our collective bargaining units. Um, and also our agreement with the Water and Sewer Authority. Um, then there is step five, which is a multi-year plan adoption. So this is a, uh, there will first be a public input into the plan, um, and then uh, looking at a web-based um, citizen survey as well um, to help identify our, our top priorities moving forward. So that, in essence is uh, the, the basis of the plan um, it's going to be it's going to start uh, if we get authorization um, it can start as early as, as August and then we'll finish in around July of 2019 very good okay we'll list this for Monday 13 part title 6 program so this is um, the non-discrimination um, policy as required for receiving federal transit funding for the part system. This is a, a policy that has to be updated every year, and this is the beginning of parts fiscal year. Okay. And we'll add that for Monday. 14, uh, is there a resolution of multimodal transportation fund program? So if you recall, we applied for approximately 200000 in CDBG funding for upgrading our Victorian um, streetlights in, in the downtown with LED fixtures. This is a companion grant that would expand the area for LED conversion in the downtown that will enhance the visibility, safety, and reduce electric costs for the borough. Good. We'll add that for Monday. 15 is a minor subdivision land development ordinance amendments. Uh, you, yeah. Okay. Yeah, this is a uh, recommendation that came out of the ad hoc zoning, and certainly, Ryan, you can jump in if, if you'd like. But I think the uh, committee had recommended um, a new section be added to our Saldo ordinance. The intent was to provide for minor plan category, which is probably more procedural than anything. But the idea is to simplify uh, the process of land development and minor subdivisions for certain projects, such as lot line adjustments, simple conveyances, uh, 
situations where we're creating maybe one additional lot where there's not um, a lot of issues that have to be addressed. Um, if you approve this, I'm following public hearing and everything, hopefully what it will do, it will make uh, minor land development and minor subdivisions easier to go through, less costly, but at the same time still protect the borough by providing the needed information in all the projects. Mm -hmm. So this was the recommendation of the ad hoc committee. I hope I summarized it correctly. Um, there is quite a long checklist of things that have to be in place in order to qualify for this. It just can't be any uh, project and there is default language that Borough Council can say we don't think this is a minor plan and you have to go through the regular process. And Chuck, just a question as you're the solicitor for other municipalities, is this a fairly common um, uh, ordinance in other municipalities? Yes, it's, it's not uncommon at all and again it's really just those small projects that don't really need all of the bells and whistles. If you guys remember there's a lot of times where you'll grant waivers to certain things because they're in there for large projects. So this would kind of help those projects where it's really not necessarily a, a full-blown, you know, development of, of a large scale. So your next step, if you're ready, would be to authorize the preparation and advertisement of the ordinance and schedule a public hearing. Um, the only thing I'll say, and this is up to you, I know the committee has other recommendations coming down the pike with respect to zoning changes so I don't know if you want to bundle them all together or you want to move on this one first um, there's no right or wrong answer it's just going to take several months to get everything in order so I just want to make sure that whatever you want us to do we're doing in a timely fashion <laughs> cost-effective to do it in one shot so well it, it certainly is and that's why I'm saying if this will be an amendment to Saldo if you have zoning ordinance changes coming down we can put them all in one ordinance and still have them all as part of one hearing as opposed to multiple hearings mm -hmm. for instance in September and then again in November or something like that so it's really up to you well we'll list it for consideration and action on Monday evening yeah, we'll see and, what we can do. Everyone can read through it. We'll see what we can do scheduling wise to try to um, mesh up some of the other uh, things that are that are close but not mm -hmm. quite there yet. Maybe we delay it by a month or two at the most. But well, th uh, this is just another step in trying to make it easier for people that want to do developments or small projects to get through the system. Uh, less expensive, faster. Uh, but you have a weekend to read the material and get back to me to us Monday evening and okay. when you take the vote you can say prepare and, and advertise but but hold off so you don't do it till the rest is ready or not right. so that'll be part of your motion or part of your direction anyway very good so that's listed 16 trilogy park the lease agreement okay so this is um, the borough's lease agreement at uh, trilogy park for the for the BMX group um, we're recommending that uh, we renew this lease under the same terms and conditions um, we really haven't had uh, any any issues with it to date so. okay so we'll add that for Monday let's make a comment that that was a 15-year lease that's how long the park and everything has been in existence so right. uh, I know some people have been at the table a long time but that was a 15-year lease and uh, we're, we concluded that and hopefully you have another 15 years with the with a quality tenant and uh, a good event. There's a big event this week. Right? There it is. Yeah. 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 Do it. Do you want to give them a plug? I'll let Michael do that. Do you want to give a plug for the BMX event? <coughs> Certainly. Uh, the the um, there's Gold Cup race in uh, Trilogy BMX Park in Memorial Park uh, this weekend. Uh, we're really proud of uh, this particular event. Uh, the, the quality of uh, the, the facilities as they are maintained by the, the Trilogy Group is really what attracts these kind of races. You have to, I should say, they have to put in a bid uh, for these races, and uh, they have consistently delivered uh, on bringing these kind of events to Pottstown. Um, they bring in people from all over this country. 
uh, in the past, we've hosted events that have brought in people from, uh, riders from 49, 50 states. We even see them from Alaska and Hawaii into this. Mm. We don't know precisely what to expect uh, for the, the breadth of registrants for the Gold Cup this weekend, but you can expect uh, riders from all over the country will be coming to Pottstown uh, to utilize Trilogy Park this weekend. So stop on out and check it out. It's really something to behold, and you can see uh, a really tight-knit community of riders that have come to our tight-knit community uh, to experience it, and uh, you can hopefully take something away from that. So I invite you down to Memorial Park this weekend to check it out. Great. Mike, what time is that at this weekend? That I do not know, except to say that the opening ceremonies will begin at 11 o'clock on Saturday. Practices begin Friday, uh, opening, Saturday, uh, opening uh, ceremonies 11 o'clock Saturday. Thank you. To the AM. Good. Okay, 17 is all city management services agreement. Yeah, so um, this is a proposal to extend this agreement for an additional year um, to ex uh, under the same terms and, and conditions. Um, this is for uh, community champions. Corporation, which basically provides um, registration of uh, vacant properties for the borough. And I don't know, Keith, if you want to add a little bit more detail to that. Um, community Champions usually registers between uh, 150 and probably one year or was close to 300 different properties. It's just not vacant properties. Um, it's foreclosure, pre-foreclosure, and some other situations. But the asset that it gives us is gives us the property management company, the lending institution, all the contacts, and it's been extremely mm -hmm. bountiful as far as us getting And the cost to us is? Hmm? The cost to us? There is, is no cost to us. Thank you. Yeah, Dan, I think there was a miscommunication. There's two items you're talking about. That, that was the uh, community champions agreement for property registration, and right. all city management is the crossing guards. Correct. Okay. Yeah. All right. Oh. Okay. So we're, back to so we're back to all city. All city management. For the guards? Yeah. So the all city management, um, <coughs> per a 1991 agreement, the, the school district is responsible to pay all costs for crossing guard services, while the borough is responsible for administration of the crossing guard program. So we're seeking to extend the terms of the previous contract which included an hourly rate of 29.52 not to exceed $247,000 annually um, subject to review with the borough manager and solicitor okay there, there was some issue that the guards were not there, not there long enough in the afternoon yeah well I mean there are um, provisions in the existing contract uh, where we can um, take back payments uh, or withhold payments if they are more than 15 minutes late or if they leave 15 minutes early mm -hmm. um, we're working on uh, enhancing communication with uh, the, the school district because it's you know it's, it's really them that would get that report right and we're not always getting that report uh, on the borough side um, but we would have to take care of it since we're responsible for administering right. the, the program so um, I have a meeting in the next couple of weeks with the school district superintendent and we're going to discuss how we can Okay, so we'll also add that for Monday evening. 19 is 505 Lincoln Avenue development. They're requesting an extension. If you recall, you would approve this project several months ago. Um, this is a townhouse project. I believe it's Lincoln and Washington. And uh, what you typically do is require them to comply with the conditions within 90 days. They're working to comply with those conditions. They just haven't satisfied them yet. So they're just asking for an extension from you for another 90 days to comply with the conditions and it's a normal request and there's no real reason not to grant it because they're working toward their goals okay and without comment we'll list that for monday evening 20 is the water trench bids uh they were opened yes um <coughs> they they were open and these these are for the restoration and fi final paving of planned and emergency road openings, primarily due to underground um, water and sewer main breaks. So um, we, we put this out the bid to have this um, final paving completed. And um, the winning contractor is Eagle Contracting Inc. Mm -hmm. 
418 Far Fairmount Drive, Chester Springs, PA. Okay. Let's start for Monday. 21 is hard. Uh, 312 King Street. for us to approve. So we'll take a look at that, add that. 22 is hard. This is administratively approved. It means our staff approved this. First is 1122 High Street and second is 20 North Franklin Street. They'll be on for Monday evening. Uh, board appointments. Um, we have an opening on a blighted property review committee and this is somewhat restricted to explain yeah i think um, everybody is aware the blighted property review committee is created by statute and borough ordinance and one of the requirements is that one member be a member of the uh, borough planning commission at this point uh, i believe that we are lacking a planning commission member on the committee um, yeah, well, we're met, yes, on the planning commission, but we need a planning commission member to serve on the committee. So, uh, unfortunately, for this appointment, you're limited to one of five individuals, and at this point, you only have four. Right. Uh, so, again, that's a, a requirement, and I'm not sure that Mr. Uh, Madison uh, really satisfies that requirement. Okay. We need to find someone to fill up. Okay. Right. Well, we'll see what happens till Monday. See if we can find someone to fill both on that. Uh, that would be items A and C under board appointments. B is a Padita appointment, and on the hard copy, we're only showing. We're not showing all the candidates. Looking at uh, Mr. Hilton, a Gabriel, David Heiser, Marta Wilgus Salo, and Steve Everett. So we'll list those names for Monday night. And then see is the Planning Commission. Uh, again, we're we're in this dilemma of needing to find someone to serve on both commissions. Or Actually, just found out Mr. Hilton withdrew. Oh, okay. So Mr. Hilton withdrew from planning. Uh, we'll just see what develops over the weekend. From Pedita. Yeah. Tom Hilton withdrew from the Pedita consideration. Right. I'm actually from Pedita. Um, Sheila asked me to pop up real quick. My name is Pamela Gormish. Um, she wanted us to <clears throat> um, say we met with all of the different people that um, applied for the board position. And because of time constraints, she, as well as the other board members, think that Gabrielle David Heiser should be the one considered um, for the new position. That's your suggestion? Correct. Thank you. So noted. All right, 24 interim fire marshal agreement. Okay, so um, this uh, would be an appointment uh, to <coughs> Richard Langle, who was our former uh, fire chief fire marshal, as a part time interim fire marshal until a permanent fire marshal slash chief is selected. This appointment will give us coverage for fire investigations and inspections. However, control of the fire scenes will, will still fall to the highest ranking deputy fire uh, chief in the, in the departments in absence of a permanent chief. Okay. And we'll list this for Monday. 25, emergency management coordinator appointment. Michael okay, Campagio. yeah, we've uh, received application from Michael Camp. Campeggio? Campeggio. Campeggio. So he would like to be considered uh, as emergency management coordinator. Okay. We'll list that for Monday. 26, uh, Block Party, Street Closure, Lee Avenue for July 28, 2018. Uh, okay, this is a, just simply a block cl uh, closure for Block Party. Um, mm -hmm really not a whole lot of other details here from 11 a.m. To, to 8 p.m. Okay. It's for neighborhood. A neighborhood, yes. Mm -hmm. Block park. 
All right, no comment. We'll list that for Monday. Twenty fourth. So, Councillor Lindsay, you should attend that. I, <laughs> <laughs> I was just thinking. You can invite yourself. <laughs> Bring a case of water. It's your first official duty. <laughs> Go to a party. <laughs> All right, 27 is National Night Out, and we do this every year. It's a street closure request for North Washington Street on August 7th. And we'll list that for approval Monday evening. And now it's time for comments from citizens present. To those of you who have signed, there is a three-minute limit. Uh, Cheryl Miller. Thanks for the reminder. I'm pretty sure I can keep it under three minutes. Cheryl Miller, 59 West 9th Street. Um, I want to address two things tonight. I received a concern brought to me about the Human Relations Commission. Um, I understand that last, my last term, the consensus was either dissolution or find a way to make it work in the community. We found a way to make it in the work in the community, but there was no money in the budget to fund it. However, it is created by ordinance, and if council is going to support community events, such as the upcoming community fair, then they should be able to absorb some of those costs in kind services with police, parks and rec, borough, streets, whatever that needs to get done, rather than issuing money to them, but also help them out in kind. Um, I don't see any reason why they should be fundraising for community events when it's a community fair for the Pottstown community. I want to take this time with this tonight's current theme of cemeteries to recognize borough streets worker Brian Marquette. He took the time to uh, locate World War II veteran Richard Cotchell's proper home at Mount, uh, Mount Zion Cemetery. Um, his headstone had been lost in police lockup for an undetermined amount of time. And um, Brian stumbled upon it and then, and then did the legwork to find its home. So I'm very much appreciated. Thank you. Thank you. Ron Williams. I told my wife when I was coming here that I didn't think I could speak for three minutes, and I asked her if I should bring my flute to spend the rest of the three minutes. And so, but she, she, she kibushed that one. So. There's always next. Wanishi, 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 thank you. Lenape for thank you. Wanishi to the council, to the administration, to all the uh, fire department personnel, the police department, the emergency, the EMTs for uh, helping us put this uh, 4th of July celebration together. Um, I, <laughs> I, I couldn't believe, um, well, International Fireworks did an incredible job. They came back to us this, uh, this year with, uh, uh, they were anxious to put on the best show they could in the time that we, we were able to allow them to do this. And uh, um, at one point in time, we did have a discussion about maybe uh, delaying it to a uh, an extended date, but uh, uh, we were able to convince them to stick around, and, and they did so, and we had that clearing, and it was just probably uh, uh, one of the most recent exciting uh, fireworks displays I've ever seen. Um, to Chief uh, Drum Haller, um, I'm going to miss you. I know a lot of us will. Um, I, I hope that uh, many of you, especially those folks out there that are watching or will be watching us, uh, uh, do what I do as frequently as you possibly can. When you see a police officer and they have the time to do it, go up and thank them. I think Chief Drum Haller has given us reason to thank uh, the kind of people that are recruited into these very dangerous and, and, and important jobs in our communities. Wanishi. Councillor, any discussion? 
Councilor Prosko. Well, everybody said it previously. I mean, it's uh, Amy Wolf, Amy Francis did a fantastic job, and the rest of the folks that uh, you know go forth and. Yeah, they, uh, that, was, that was a very impressive uh, display, especially at the very end. It was like a machine gun of fireworks that going up. But, uh, so everybody could stop uh, shooting off fireworks, right? <laughs> it's hard enough to get a two-year-old to go to sleep without shooting off things until midnight. But uh, I'm sure I'll go on to September. I'm going to take a pause. Thanks again, Chief. Pardon me, Don. Chaplain, you have something to add? Got to let you sign in. I think it'd be appropriate if I would behalf of the community as being a leader in this community for 31 years, I would like to uh, say that we're going to lose a great uh, chief, one who have worked well in the community, a relationship that became impeccable. And uh, my stint working with him, we became friends. And um, I just believe that um, Pottstown have been made better and honored because of his presence. And so we're going to miss him. At the same token, I would like to say that um, for the next chief that we have, uh, a few years ago when I first started driving and getting a car and stuff, I uh, did want to go the right route. And uh, I had a tar that was worn. And so there was a place in the back alley that you can get used tires for $5. <laughs> so uh, it looked pretty good to me. So I bought the tire only to find out it only took me three blocks. <laughs> and it was back flat. I got what I paid for by spending cheaply for this tire. I also put my life on the line. My safety was, in, was violated because I got what I paid for. I just want to say to the council, in your election for our next chief, Remember, you only get what you pay for. Thank you. Councilor Lebedinsky. Uh, just a reminder with the uh, weather and the people who work outside and even inside, stay cool, stay hydrated, check on your elders, children, yourselves, neighbors, and uh, let's uh, just stay healthy. Councilor Kirkland. to uh, give a reluctant farewell and congratulations to the chief. Um, been a pleasure working with you. Um, and um, just wish you all the best uh, in your retirement. Um, also want to congratulate Ms. Lindsay for her uh, appointment here on council. Also, uh, I went to the 4th of July festivities. It was very good. Um, the parade was very nice. There was a lot of, just a lot of people. We were all talking and having a good time. Um, it, was, it was very well done. So I wanted to congratulate everyone who was involved with putting that together. Okay. Councilor Lindsay, anything? Um, yes, I have um, on June 20th, uh, students and uh, some of the parents and committee activists and leaders, we um, went to Harrisburg for 100% uh, funding for Pottstown School District and other schools. And um, I met with, I was one of the four people that met with um, Representative Quigley. And um, this all was led by Marlene Amato and um, it was a very exciting experience. Um, we prayed for the funding and we was able to get an agreement that uh, we can get that 100% funding for Pottstown School District. So that was a win for us. And um, I also went to the 4th of July festivities and it was nice. I had a good time. Um, my husband and I, we started watching it from uh, Pots and Pans, I think that's the name of the restaurant. We had a good window seat. And um, we went out and um, looked at the festivities. It was really nice, and the fireworks was good, too. So um, it was great. Good. Mayor? I just want to thank Tom Hilton for um, his tree project. I believe in not this weekend, but next weekend, Rotary will be... Um, planting Tom's 100 trees in the nursery behind the high school. 
So, Tom, thank you for working with Rotary to make this uh, tree project possible. And if you want to come out and help and bring a shovel, we'd greatly appreciate it. <laughs> okay. Uh, yesterday was phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal. Um, the presentation, the parade, activities at the park, and even rain couldn't stop our fireworks last night. Mm -hmm. Yeah, proud to be from Pottstown. Mm -hmm. And I cannot uh, close the meeting until I say, give my sincere thanks to my friend Rick Drumheller. Uh, thank you as being the chief. Thank you for being my friend. Uh, I won't miss you because I will try to keep in touch with you. Wish you a great retirement. Uh, we will be going to an executive session. We will probably coming, come back with uh, some more business. It is uh, at this time we have an add-on, uh, whatever the number is. And uh, we're going to entertain a motion to uh, have an interim police chief beginning tomorrow. Mr. Counselor or uh, Solicitor, so if you will give us the wording. A, a suggested motion, if Council's inclined, is a motion to appoint Michael Markovich as the interim police chief of the borough of Pottstown, uh, effective tomorrow, at the close of business tomorrow. Uh, 4 p.m. 4 p.m. Uh, at an annual salary of $110,000. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Just since it's an add-on, you do have to allow the public the right to uh, provide any comment on the motion before you vote on the motion. Okay. Hearing nothing from the counselors, any discussion from the audience? Any other questions or comments? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion carries. We won't be coming back. No, we're, we're going back into executive session, con continue personnel discussions, and won't be coming back. Right. Meeting adjourned. Cheryl Miller.